Hello, I'm Julian Whittle from Cumbria Chamber of Commerce and I'm here with the Chamber's Chief Executive Rob Johnson to discuss our campaign to encourage employers to recruit and retain older workers. Now Rob, this campaign has been prompted by I suppose what you could call a ticking demographic time bomb. By 2030, half of all adults in the UK will be aged over 50. That's going to make it more and more difficult for businesses to recruit, isn't it? That's right. I mean, but particularly here in Cumbria, and we have what's called the super aging population. For example, in South Lakes, 56% will be over 50 by 2030, Eden, 55%. Yeah. And at the same time, Cumbria's working age population uh, is going to shrink from around about 250,000 now to about 230,000 by 2030. Uh, uh, there are more older workers retiring than there are young people joining the workforce. Yeah. And that's going to be a headache for employers, Julian. Uh, Eden and South Lakeland already have almost full employment and Carlisle's not far behind. Uh, imagine what it's going to be like when the labour the labor market gets tighter. And this isn't something that is going to change... Um, you know, there isn't a set of baby boomers coming behind that's going to, to keep this right again. Yeah. This is this is a trend that's going to continue, and there are a lot of other factors behind it that that, that we need to be mindful of. The fact that you know people are living longer, um, uh, and and want to have get more value out of their lives. So there's a lot of things I think we can do with businesses that help us sort of overcome the challenges here. So the idea behind this campaign is to say, well, look, one way to to combat this issue is to persuade older workers to delay their retirement and stay in the workforce a bit longer. Yeah, inevitably employers will become more dependent from what we just said on older workers. But there are actually the real economic value mm-hmm. uh, advantages to this. Uh, for example, if the employment rate for the 50 to 65 age group was the same as that for the 35 to 50 age group, that would boost the UK's GVA by about 6% or around about 88 billion a year. Good quite signif- it's quite yeah. significant. So do, do older workers bring any particular benefits to a business? Well, not, the, the, obvious, the obvious question is knowledge and experience. Mm. They, they often have a maturity of judgment that younger employers don't, don't sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes lack. Uh, and with retraining, they can help businesses plug skills gaps. So, mm. you know, don't just think of them staying in their current jobs. You know, think about retraining and, and whether, you know, you, 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 that knowledge of the business and that maturity can be used to help you know, develop the business and take it forward. What you're saying is you can actually treat an old, uh, teach an old dog new tricks. Uh, absolutely. And, and I think, you know, we've got to be careful with thinking about these, we're not thinking about people over 50 as doddery old people, you know. Mm. We're not talking about recruiting the 85 plus year olds, you know. <laughs> but it's, it's not as big a differential as I think it used to be. Yeah. Uh, and certainly, I, I think, um, you know, there's a real value in understanding how to get the best out of older people moving forward. It's going to be essential, really. But also, I think... Um, you know, they reflect the customer base your business is operating in. You know, the world isn't all driven entirely by 25 to, to, to 35 year olds, you know. Um, you know, what's reflected in your business is reflected outside in society so, as so well. You, so your workforce, is ref- the age profile of your workforce needs to re- uh, reflect the age profile of your customer Absolutely. base. Absolutely, that's, yeah. that's what I'm saying, yeah. 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 Um, so that's fine. And I suppose that there's also, you know, the idea... Uh, the idea of age diversity in your workforce as well, that brings benefits too, doesn't it? Because people have different ways of approaching problems. There are real advantages in employing people of different ages. Uh, for example, different generations have different ways of approaching and solving problems uh, and making decisions. Um, age diversity has been shown to really improve productivity. So you're making a, a compelling case for older workers. So why do you think more employers aren't, aren't queuing up to recruit them? Well, there are a few myths, I think, uh, that need debunking, Julian. For example, some employers think all the workers will leave after a year or two and retire. Mm. And in fact, if you recruit a 50-year-old, they're, as, and, and evidence proves this, they are twice as likely to be with you at the business in five years' time compared to a 20, 20-year-old, for example. And it's the same, uh, I guess, as we found with uh, when you when you 
invest in training people you know the the, the the myth is that they immediately go and leave you in actual fact evidence suggests that they stay longer so I think it's the same thing mm-hmm. about building a, a relation there a relationship there another myth is that older workers are less healthy right and workers in their 50s are actually half as likely to take a day off sick than a worker in their 20s really right yeah. so so how can businesses become older worker friendly well it really requires a change of mindset on behalf of the employer and to a degree <laughs> on the employee which yeah. is why we you know we're advocating a sort of dialogue here but certainly a, 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 there's got to be a willingness from the employer to be flexible to tackle the age bias for example so for example if you're advertising for staff make sure that the photo or ad includes older workers you know not just thrusting young uh, young things in their mid-twenties you know that that can be a turn off for, for older people. Say, yeah. well, it's not this job isn't for me. Yeah, uh, and, and around one in five older workers are caring for an older dependent or relative. You know, be, be mindful of this. They may need to restructure the working week around the care commitments, for example. Um, and, and I guess that gives you also an opportunity to really look at the amount of uh, of hours that you want to use that person for. You know, mm. We, for example, in the chamber have, have, have become very flexible about the way we're employing some of older people and we've, we've got them on on a less number of days a week, we still get the same output. So it's actually worked out, you know, if to be per- perfectly mercenary for a moment, it's worked out better for us and, and, and the workers, from what I gather, are, are really happy because they're getting the time they need to do other things. So, yes, because it's quite common, isn't it, once people sort of hit 55, that they're looking to work fewer days, but they don't want to stop work completely. So that's what you mean by employees being flexible to accommodate those sorts of needs. Absolutely. And, and, and you know, without opening the dialogue up, and, and, and assessing this, it's not going to. Co- it doesn't something that comes out naturally because people have got these these predetermined vi- positions on, on on the way that people age and, and then retire. So let's look at, at what good practice looks like. Then, what, what procedures should employers be putting in place to support older workers? Well, without sounding like an old-fashioned sort of public safety safety information advert, um, we, we think that it's a, a, th- a good. St- three-stage process is essential. First, you've got to look uh, look at, 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 at the data that, that, you, that you've got around this. What is the age range of your workforce, for example? How many older workers apply for jobs? How many are recruited? That can tell you if you've got an age bias, for example, in your management and recruitment. Right. The, the next stage is to listen, have a conversation, as I mentioned earlier, with your employees. What are the wants? What are the needs? What perspectives have they got? And that will enable you to understand where the opportunities are. And I see this as much as an opportunity, you know, as a a challenge, as it were. Then act upon on on those two uh, previous points. Um, Use what you've learned to design and implement a strategy to increase the proportion of over over 50. So, you know, don't just say, yeah, I now know this. Actually, it's worth, you know, putting a strategy in place. And that might involve uh, changes to remove age bias, for, for example, be more flexible and, um, and have part-time working uh, arrangements. And, and, but I think the important thing is it will also allow you to look at finding a way of keeping that employee in the business. They will know about the business, they'll have real value. The role they've got may not continue, but there might be something else they can do. And looking at retraining them, for example, will really I think add a lot of value it, it, and it will save you going out mm-hmm. to the market for other people so you know use it as an, an opportunity to just remap and a bit of thinking about what the job roles are in the business and who could fulfill them. And I suppose it's good practice as well isn't it to remove any upper age limits you might have for graduate schemes and apprenticeships and, and traineeships. Yeah you know you're never too old to be an apprentice you yeah. know of people as we mentioned previously in the 60s who do an apprenticeship but I think that you know again it goes back to the point I made earlier if, if you if you put this effort in to your workers you will get the returns we do know you know by retraining staff uh, give them opportunity to, 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 to have income because there's a lot of pressure on people now you know we've got a long a long life after 65 or whatever the perceived age is uh, that, that re- require income and there's an opportunity to maybe look at another role in the business and retraining is a really really important thing to look at with with those people now I know the British Chambers of Commerce which to which Cumbria Chambers affiliated has produced materials to help businesses employ older workers focusing on on what you could call loosely the three R's retain retrain and recruit 
Yes, and I think that's what we're we're, we're asking people. To, you know, again, it goes back to is is there a, is there a, a, an approach you should take? Um, the retain we've touched on. You know, looking at the workers that you've got, what can you do to retrain them, given previous conversations we've had in this podcast, Julian? Retrain, absolutely, there are plenty of schemes around to help you do that. You know, we're working with the EDGE Consortium on on workforce development and, and we can help around there with schemes we've got. But there will be schemes as well. Uh, and then look at your recruitment and, and whether, you know, by reviewing the, your approach and the job roles and the time that you need for people to do that job, whether you should actually, you know, target a, a different age group mm-hmm. rather than the standard sort of 37 hours a week. Um, British Chambers of Commerce are taking this very seriously. I mean, we're working on this, this programme with the uh, Department for Work and Pensions uh, of EV UK. Uh, and business in the community and, and as a result of that we produced a video and a toolkit and the toolkit looks at, in more detail at the policies and procedures that you can employ and can put in place there are also fact sheets and information on specific issues for example supporting older workers through transitions mm. um, supporting carers in the workplace and midlife clear uh, career reviews all of that's available on the chamber website um, there's also a BCC, British Chambers of Commerce podcast with Andy Briggs, who's the chief executive uh, of EV UK, and he's also the government's older workers uh, business champion. Okay, that's great. Thanks very much, Rob. Thanks, Julian.